Big Chungus and its semiotic roots in the Earth Goddess cults of the Primordial Man. Introduction Earth as Mother Big Chungus Cartoon, Meme, and Symbol of Fertility and Crop Growth? Many who are aware of Big Chungus are not aware of the rabbit symbolism and fertility connection throughout history, but that is what we intend to shed light upon in this very essay today. What is Big Chungus? It should be a simple question. Big Chungus is an overweight depiction of Bugs Bunny from Looney Tunes, right? Well, that would be right on the surface level, sure. However, there is an irrefutable underlying aspect of them that needs to be addressed. We must start from the beginning. With the relationship of man and earth, originally, man acted as a peaceful inhabitant of the earth, not taking her fertile soil for granted. However, as you can see from the world around you, Mankind now acts as an abuser that sees the earth's resources as something to be commodified, yet there still exists the remnants of an older, far more ancient relationship between man and the earth, personified in the image of the mother, which today makes itself known as the glyph known as Big Chungus. An example of the mother dynamic is that of the Anatolian Sibylle, or Magna Mater, meaning Great Mother, as she was renamed when she was bought and instated in Rome following dire prodigies during the Second Punic War. So ancient was her cult image and priesthood that her presence in the city, though sanctioned by the Sibylline oracles, was viewed as foreign, wild, and strange. Although her original image was an unhewn black meteorite, Sibylle has also been depicted as a multi-breasted goddess, or in her oldest idols, an enthroned woman of shocking obesity, much like our favourite fat rabbit, Big Chungus. Her function is not as a grain goddess, like Ceres or Persephone, but rather comes from a time where she, since the goddess is actually the earth, brought forth her fruits, unasked, untamed. Her antiquity is attested, not only by being descended from the mother goddess cults of Neolithic Chatalcuic culture of Anatolia, but being present even in neocognate cultures exemplified by the Venus of Willendorf. The most obvious comparison between the Venus, Magna Mater, and Big Chungus is in the distinct similarities between them physically. Being practically identical, besides a pair of breasts on the Venus statue that the androgynous Big Chungus doesn't have, the goddess is essentially unsexed, recalling ideas of the Virgin Mother in future traditions, for she brings forth fruit without being worked by man's plough, and even her consort Attis, a god of vegetation, is castrated. Her priests, meanwhile, are inducted into a service of castration, self-beating, begging and frantic rites, all these showing their antiquity. The lack of sex being used as a symbol for agriculture points to a time where agriculture was not yet known by man, or even that sex was the reason for procreation. The savage, bloody nature of her rites also points to an ancient time when man had not yet been tamed, or rather, had not yet tamed the gods and goddesses in his environment. The goddess, then, is rooted in a future rather than a past, as most religions are now, where Christianity looks back onto the man's ancestor Adam to know man's nature and then Christ for salvation. The cult of Sibylle looks forward into the future, anticipating the gifts of the goddess. This concept of anticipation is observed in the self-castration of the priests to serve the goddess and they castrate themselves, not as a symbol of purification from what is past, or what is in his nature, which is implied to be ancient, but the priest is castrated in anticipating union with the mother. The masculine is sacrificed for the sake of the unsexed feminine. She is a terrible, chaotic being, and yet a merciful mother. Part 2. The hare as a grain spirit. Grain, then, or the fruits of the earth in general, coming from an unsexed goddess, would be full of a certain androgynous vitality and power, This power would be known and invoked as a spirit inhabiting the grain by animistic man, and this spirit would be given a symbol or a form. Among many of the grain spirits of Europe, the one that survived is that of the hare. Up to even today, the practice of referring to the grain as the hare, along with rituals surrounding the harvest remain, although their true meaning and symbolism are forgotten. Ancient understandings of the hare as an animal are ultimately based on the symbol of the hare as a grain spirit. In the natural histories of Pliny the Elder, the hare is said to be a hermaphrodite, being able to reproduce without a male. 
This is undoubtedly cognate with the unsexed nature of the mother goddess, being mentioned above. Both being of the earth, their bringing forth fruit in the case of the mother, and being the spirit of the fruit in the case of the hair, is a product of an androgynous nature, as would have been understood by animistic man. The hair as a spirit of androgynous fertility is still seen in the countryside customs of farming communities in Europe. In parts of Scotland, grain to be harvested is still called the hair, and it is still custom in Galloway to refer to the reaping of the last grain as the cutting of the hair. The role of the hair as a fertility spirit is clearer in the practice of the parish of Minigath, where, upon cutting the hair, unmarried reapers run home with all speed, and the one who arrives first would be the first to be married. In East Prussia, meanwhile, it is believed that the hare resides in the last patch of standing grain and must be chased out by the last reaper. The reapers hurry with their work, for none wish to have to chase out the hare, for the man who does so is laughed at. This laughing or ridiculing of the masculine ego of the last reaper, the one who serves the mother goddess longest, is analogous to the castration of the Sibelian priests. We see here, though faintly, the remaining forms of animistic thinking, that the masculine must be done away with in the face of the hermaphroditic mother. The presence of the hair confirms the blessing of the mother. If the mother is actually the earth, personified as a Venus idol, then it is truly the hair spirit that is her symbol. Part 3. The invocation of the mother as a response to mass anxiety. Though technology and the times are radically different now, unrecognisable to our primordial ancestors. The nature of man is essentially the same. The same gods, or rather symbols, are employed as answers in the face of trouble, strife and anxiety. In our age, so marked and coloured by trouble, strife and anxiety, it is apt that man once again turns to the gods and spirits that assisted him in antiquity. The anxiety that mankind faces now is an unresolved existential dread where in ancient times life and death and order and chaos were merely cyclical epochs of the universe, which was meaningful in itself, coupled by the resolution of the afterlife. It is that very universal meaning that is now absent, and thus cause for cosmic terrors. The ecological crisis is so feared that none wish to speak of it, for it is more comforting to think of one's own death than the vanishing of the very earth beneath our feet. Man has broken into the closed-off knowledge of the celestial bodies, and now his existence is threatened by comets, black holes, exploding stars, solar storms, and a thousand other things non-existent in the psychic horizons of our ancestors. The fear and anxiety of humanity today is more augmented and perverse than any time in history. Mankind thus refers to the old ways. If in our digital age, to meme a concept, deity, idea, or figure is to worship it, then the mother goddess of her earliest antiquity has returned in the form of Big Chungus. As explained above, the mother goddess was an ancient deity of the future rather than the past, one where worship involves anticipation rather than expiation. Similarly, Big Chungus, though ancient, since his pictorial representation comes from a generation before our own, is a deity of the future, as the Chungian essence remains unknown to us, and would even be more foreign to the generation from whence it came. The physical representation as an obese rabbit slash hare is no doubt a combination of the symbolism of fertility, inherited unconsciously from the psyche of our ancestors, although the similarities between Big Chungus and the Mother Goddess are apparent in appearance, they are equally analogous in the fact that their service consists of anxious worship. To meme, Big Chungus is essentially a mystery cult, for the meaning of the symbol is an unknowable mystery, and the name, figure, and meaning of Big Chungus are unrelated to each other, or even the character of Bugs Bunny, or even a true hare. A story of Buddha goes that an Indian prince once sent his two skilled artists to paint a portrait of him, and for all their skills, failed at each attempt. Seeing this, the Buddha explained that the distortion of his image by their hand is due to the fact that they have not known the Dharma truly. And thus, as true Dharma could not be depicted by the lesser imaginative faculties, since the Dharma transcends form, the form which embodies the Dharma necessarily will fail to be a faithful image. The obese rabbit form of Big Chungus, as a distortion of Bugs Bunny, which is a further distortion of a rabbit, and yet derives from the most ancient of symbols, points to the fact that the meaning of the meme 
transcends its form. Big Chungus and his worship is essentially a mystery cult and thus elicits a strange feeling of giddy euphoria. Giddy euphoria since man, though not knowing the mystery of the Chungian glyph, participates directly in the aforementioned mysteries when memeing the image. This heady euphoria elicited by the image among users of the interweb draws ultimately from the same euphoria that drove ancient priests to castrate and flagellate themselves or to whip themselves into a savage frenzy before the image of the goddess. In both cases, the worshippers know the unknowable. It is with this frenzied experience that the hopes or anticipation of the future are pinned on the power of the figure. In the case of the goddess, it is clear that what was anticipated was the bounty and fruitfulness of the earth. However, in the case of Big Chungus, what is anticipated is the very continuation of man's environment, that his existence may continue to be sustained. In his frenzy, he worships this unknowable symbol that represents unknowable forces of nature unto which he pins his anticipations or his hopes, i.e. his own future or the existence of humanity. Man, whose anxiety is that he is powerless, never certain of his present or future, in the face of greater forces, finds that the only soothing balm is to grovel again before the powers that once provided to him. And yet he has forgotten. Big Chungus, as a symbol of the unknowable being, worshipped in order to secure the natural and material bounties of the unknowable future, is mankind's only answer to the problems he faces in the world. Though in new forms, contained in new images, or given new symbols, the relationship between man and the universe has never changed, and he is still at the mercy of the very gods and goddesses he was forced to fashion himself. Big Chungus and its semiotic roots in the Earth Goddess cults of Primordial Man, written by at Hylomorphic Atomism, performed by at Agrophobic.chad. Bibliography The Underlying Religion by Martin Lings. Religions of Rome, A History, Volume 1 by Dame Mary Beard. Natural Histories by Pliny the Elder. The Golden Bow by Sir James George Frazier. The Eleusinian Mysteries by Georgie Malonis.